Hello! Hi guys! Welcome back to One Man's Junk. Okay guys, in today's episode we're going to have a brief 40 minute explanation of the new laws and regulations coming in by the FDA that are going to affect, you know, YouTube creators and the content that they put out. And uh, Nah, I'm only kidding, we're not going to do that at all. We're going to have a look at some awesome action figures, we're going to do action figure identification and of course we'll see my finds of the week or maybe even finds of the month, my favorite finds of course. Um, but before we do all that, and of course all jokes aside, if you are under the age of 13, I'm sorry to say this channel is not intended for you. It is in fact intended for an adult collector. All right, so without further ado, let's dive in. Let's have a look at my uh, general pickups uh, from ToyCon from the last few weeks. Um, one pickup which may surprise you was a complete scare glow for $13. Now I know you're thinking, $13, that sounds like daylight robbery. Well, it would be except it's the Reaction Super 7 one. Now, if you haven't already picked one of these up, I would strongly recommend and suggest that you do pick one up. It glows in the dark like nobody's business. It is like a light bulb. And of course, it's quite a cool little figure, very affordable. So I would certainly pick one up if you haven't already. All right, and then we have this one here. So you may be looking at the close up and thinking that looks kind of like Lois Lane, um, kind of animated series style action figure. And you would be correct. Uh, this one's actually kind of special. It wasn't released in a blister pack. It was only released in a big multi-pack that is the Battle for Metropolis. Um, so it is a pretty cool figure. It, I wouldn't say it's extremely rare, but certainly a nice pickup. And have a look at this guy. So if you were to guess his name, you'd say Garlic Face or Garlic Man, and you'd be right. It is Garlic Man. Um, but what's really funny about him is actually when you think about it, he is the arch nemesis of Little Dracula. So Little Dracula's nemesis is Garlic Man. I can live with that. That makes sense. I have a fairly rare Black Star figure. Um, I believe it's a mutant. He is missing his wings and his glow-in-the-dark handcuffs. Um, he's a pretty cool figure. You don't see him too often. And he's still actually got the, the flint, so the spark feature works. Um, actually quite funny, if you haven't seen it already, I'll include a clip of the Black Star um, TV ad for this flicking feature. It is a sight to behold. Wait and see. Do for your kids. Laser lights, laser lights, it's Black Star. Defender of right. Okay, folks, and have a look at this one here. So this chap, um, he may not look familiar to you. He has a few markings that makes him fairly easy to distinguish. He's got a few crucifixes on him here. And yes, you're right. He does in fact belong to the superhero team of none other than Bible Man. Yes, our favorite Christian Avenger. Uh, Bible Man actually is very popular. It's actually just been relaunched. There's an animated series of it now. So hopefully animated toys too. Um, but of course, Bible Man is famous because he wants to terminate the toxic tonic of disrespect. And finally, this actually almost ended up in my finds of the day. Um, I'm a huge fan of Computer Warriors because, of course, you know, the scale of the figures that it comes with. I love that it's, you know, it's a lot like uh, Mask, Kenner, uh, Transformers. You know, it's an object that isn't what it appears to be. In this case, we have a football or soccer ball. And of course, this opens up into some kind of alien spaceship, spaceship here. Um, and the reason why I didn't make it to finds of the day, even though I need this piece, is because unfortunately this satellite piece here is missing the clip on dish. But we do have the correct pilot, so it is a nice find. Very happy. Welcome to action figure identification. All right guys, so uh, let's start off with a line that everybody loves. That is of course from the real Ghostbusters. Um, that's actually from the Slimed Heroes um, Kenner line. So you see he, these here, these are actually the masks that come with the figures that of course cover their faces. One and two. This one here is definitely Kenner Ghostbusters. It's one that you don't come across too often. 
It's a little bit smaller and of course it doesn't look like a regular Canon Ghostbusters accessory and I'll show you exactly who that belongs to now. All right guys, this one is a crazy good find. Um, so this belongs to Mighty Max Escape from Skull Island. And by all intents and purposes, this looks like all the accessories, uh, minus one missile, Mighty Max himself, and of course the two other main good guys. But if you have a look at what we got here, look, we got this throne here. We've got this uh, turquoise turtle, yellow crab. We've got a few of the bad guy here, but I think this is definitely the best find. Um, that's a pretty hard to find piece. Have a look at that. It's a tiny little orange missile. I think it pops out one of the eyes. There we go. So you're probably wondering, Mike, what are you doing with hairbrushes? Great question. Um, but I have a strong feeling that these belong to Shira. Um, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure these belong to Crystal Swiftwind or perhaps to Swiftwind herself. Um, so these are Mattel Shira. All right, guys. This is a great little pickup here. Now the person I bought it from, uh, big shout out to Shop the Curiosity on Instagram. Um, I was happy to tell them what they had and I offered them a more than fair price because of course this is very useful to me. It doesn't look like much, it just looks like a piece of red plastic but this little clip is actually really tough. This little clip belongs to that's right, it's to Flying Fist's He-Man and Dragon Blast Skeletor and it clips in the back there. You clip it in the back and then it means you can have the play motion with the action figure. So a great little find. All right guys, and here's another top trio. So I'm not big on this line. I'm actually not that mad about wrestling to be honest with you. Um, there's enough diving about in football or soccer as we say back in Europe for me so that does me but I have been fortunate enough to find these um, these actually all belong to WWF Hasbro so I believe that belongs to Coco the wrestler I can't remember his name didn't watch it. Uh, we've got this one here I believe that's to Honky Tonk that's a great little find and this one here again it's to another um, Hasbro wrestler I, I'm sorry guys I just did not watch it Okay, so this fairly innocuous looking spear missile projectile has been bothering me for the best part of a year. I've put it up in the action figure identification groups. No one was able to figure it out. It's been wrongly assumed or guessed that it may belong to street sharks. Not true. I found it by accident the other day, finally at last, and I can reveal that this accessory belongs to James Bond Jr. and I believe it's the scuba or the deep dive figure. Another innocuous looking accessory. Nothing to it, huh? Just looks like a walking stick. You've probably passed it, you've seen it, you've thrown it in your bin of accessories because you're like, who needs that? What use is that? Well, that actually belongs to Battle Beasts by Hasbro. Here's another piece. In itself, not a great piece, but it belongs to a great playset. Yes, that is from the Fortress LJN Dungeons and Dragons. This one here is pretty self-explanatory. You can probably tell just by looking at it. Yes, it's Ninja Turtles. I'll be honest with you, I'm pretty much just showing off. I found it in a bin of 50 cents cars. I was so happy, sorry. 50 cents Hot Wheels, I should say. It is in fact from the Mini Mutant playset. So it's a lovely little addition to the set. And finally guys, wow. Can you believe it? I certainly didn't. I picked up a little bit of accessories. It was all 90s nonsense. And look who's hiding there at the bottom. Yes, that little monkey. Doesn't look like much, but he belongs to the Kenner line and it's from the streets of Cairo, Indiana Jones. Wow, what a great little find. All right, folks, it's finally here. It's time for finds of the day. All right, guys, so one of my favorite finds, or should I say pickups from New Jersey Toy Con has to be none other than 
this He-Man sword. Wow, would you look at that? Yes, it's a lovely role-playing sword. Now you're probably thinking, is it He-Man? It doesn't look quite like He-Man. That's because it's from the new adventures of He-Man, so it's 1989. Or as they like to call it, Mattel, He-Man in space. It lights up with power. You can be a hero with the He-Man power sword. Uh, the big question you're probably asking yourself is, does it work? And the answer is yes, even if it is temperamental, but it does in fact work, makes lots of crazy noises, and I would recommend taking the batteries out because it does make noises just on its own accord. So, But definitely a great little pickup and certainly one that will be living on the shelf. So as you probably know by now, I do actually collect Rock Lords and I'm very pleased to present my very first monstrous Rock Lord. Um, so this is none other than Spike Stone. And if you give me one moment, I'll show you what he transforms into. Whoa, have a look at that. Pretty cool, huh? So now you know why he is in fact a monstrous Rock Lord. A great find. Definitely one of my favorite designs thus far. And you know it wouldn't be a finds of the day if I didn't mention Remco at least once. You may be wondering, is it Kristar? Is it Warrior Beasts? Is it the Lost World of the Warlords? Maybe it's one, maybe it's all three, but it's certainly time for Kristar. So I have a great little collection of Kristar. I've been slowly amassing uh, the set. Of course, I don't have the castle, but I've got some lovely little figures, some lovely little accessories, and I am very happy to present this fabulous little addition from a good friend of mine, thank you Ryan, who was kind enough to hook me up with this. Guys, isn't that great? Have a look at that. So that of course is Remco, Kristar, you've got the good wizard, the bad wizard, I believe the bad one is the one with the, the black pot here. Um, even includes an accessory so you can stir the pot too. Um, but this is why I love this line so much. You've got lots of translucent, you've got lots of great looking figures, and of course all these great little accessories and if you just give me one second not too bad huh so we're getting there almost there uh, I wouldn't say I'm close to a full set in terms of all the accessories but I think I'm almost there in terms of the uh, figures I know somebody who's holding on to the Crystal Castle so I may have to give him a call I said we were gonna talk about Remco we did talk about Remco here with Kristar but it just wouldn't be an episode of One Man's Junk if we don't at least mention either the Warrior Beasts or the Lost World of the Warlord. Now you may be thinking, I've seen this figure before, Mike. I recognize it. It's your favorite figure. It's the one that you keep with the little comic back and it looks great and all that. But why are you showing us again? Well, when I was at New Jersey Toy Con, I just finished setting up. I decided to have a little stroll just before I headed home and I could not believe what I chanced upon. I'm so excited to share it with you guys. It's something extremely rare. It hardly ever, never comes up for sale on the market. Wow. Guys, that is the Lost World of the Warlord Remco War Apolt. Catapult. But look at the condition on this, folks. It is absolutely gorgeous. The little string feature here that allows it to fire. The catapult is in perfect condition. There's no marks in it. Best of all, it does have two projectiles. It, it may be missing one, but we're not worried about, too concerned about that because it does in fact have this lovely paper insert shield here. Guys, I'm beyond pleased to add this to my collection. I genuinely can't believe I found it. I ha knew hardly anything about it. I've done a little bit of research on it. When I seen it, I didn't hesitate. Jumped right all over it and I'm delighted, absolutely delighted to add this to my collection to my shelf folks thank you so much for tuning in please make sure to like share and subscribe thanks again i'll see you soon thank you bye